Hi, my name's Mick. Today I want to talk about the Make Noise desktop modules. They're pretty popular and already been spoken about a fair bit, but today I want to try something a bit different. So, I make video games for a living, I work as a sound designer, but in my spare time I like to make little 2D games myself, just for fun. And uh, I've started off this new project, and uh, I'm not a very good visual artist, so um, I tend to just use very simple shapes and then try convince other people to help me make it look pretty, but uh, what I do like to do is use sound to convey a mood and a sense of place and a style. Um, so yeah, I'm going to take this early prototype and I'm going to use these three to uh, create some sound effects and some music for it. But also what I want to highlight is that I think that the No Coast is the best entry level device for people curious about modular synthesis, Eurorack, that sort of thing. What differentiates the uh, Zero Coast to the other uh, desktop semi-modulars like the Mini Brute 2S or the Mother 32 from Moog is that this kind of forces you to learn some concepts that are very prevalent within Eurorack modular synthesis. Um, the Mini Brute and the, and the Mother 32 and like stuff like the Pittsburgh Tiger as well, um, they are pretty traditional uh, subtractive synthesizers. I'd say the Tiger is like a bit more advanced and it's got a hell of a lot more going on but also it might be a bit more complicated as a result. And this might look complicated, but it's actually pretty simple. So it's made by Make Noise, and they're probably one of the biggest, if not the biggest, uh, manufacturer of Euro modules. And the Zero Coast contains a bunch of their concepts, which you can find in Euro Rack, kind of trimmed and slimmed down and smushed together into this one pretty small box. You don't have a filter in this. You know, the, the typical subtractive synth model of oscillator into mixer into filter is, is just not present here. Instead, what we've got are wave shaping, wave folding circuits, which are these two here, where it says overtone and multiply. There's also a couple of novel circuits, like their dynamics uh, output amplifier circuit here. They've got a, uh, a random sample and hold here. And they've got this voltage offset generator here. And there's also stuff like this knob here. This is uh, an attenuator verter which again is something that I've only ever really seen in Eurorack. Essentially what I'm saying is that this might as well be a mini Eurorack system in a case whereas the Mother 32 is a classic subtractive synthesizer with some Eurorack patching. Same with the Mini Brute, it's a classic subtractive synth that you'll be very familiar with but it just also has patching in it as well. So you could use it very simply but it also gives you just these additional controls for experimentation. Before I get going, just to make sure you're on the same page, I'm going to do a super quick, super brief overview of the No Coast. So it's essentially, it's a one oscillator synth, you've got a triangle and a square out of it. And if you follow the gold lines, you can see how this synth is internally patched. So if you look at the triangle, that's going into the overtone circuit, but then it also goes all the way up here into this balance here, which is a mixer. And this mixer mixes between the triangle and the overtone circuit. So moving on to the overtone circuit, uh, this is a wave shape, a wave folder. So you've got uh, an overtone here, which cycles between odd and even harmonics. And you've got a multiply circuit here, which is essentially the wave folder. So I think how it works is that it's wave folding, and then the overtone lets you pick out the odd and even harmonics. So you get quite a lot of sound shaping out of this. And then with the balance control here, you can either be all overtone or all triangle. To the right of the overtone circuit, you've got the slope generator. This is essentially a attack decay or rise fall envelope, which you can cycle, which means that as it rises and falls, it goes back and just 
loops around. And this is kind of like a super nifty LFO when you use it like this. What you normally get in synths is just, you know, simple wave shapes for the LFOs, like, you know, sine, triangle, square, saw, that sort of thing. But with this, you can really define your own shape. And if you look at the gold lines again, you can see that this slope is going automatically into this overtone and multiply circuit. So if I... You can see the slope generator at work. So it's really cool, super flexible. And what's kind of nuts about it is that you can cycle it so quickly. It goes into audio, right? This isn't the sort of thing you'd normally get in your standard subtractive synth. This is pretty cool. And, you know, a great example of that is if you just patch the slope generator out into this here. So this is an external input here. You can put any audio signal into there. What we're hearing now is a slope generator. So if I slow this down. So essentially you end up taking this single oscillator synth into a two oscillator synth. To the right of the slope generator, you've got the contour generator. This is just a simple attack, sustain, and decay envelope, which controls the dynamics amplifier output. The final bit of this synth is the utility section here. So you've just got a simple clock input here and a clock output here. That light just shows the clock pulse. Right now, this is synced to, to uh, MIDI clock. Uh, beneath that, for every clock pulse, uh, this thing is a sample on hold, so it generates a random voltage and holds it until the next clock pulse. So you can use that to control all sorts of things. I'll put it in here. Pretty cool. Beneath that, what you've got here is a voltage uh, offset and inverter. So any signal that you put into here it was going to come out of here, so you can mix two signals together and sum them out, sum them out here. But it's going to attenuate the signal. So if I just take the sample and hold out of there, and then take that out of there, and put it into I don't know, let's just put it into pitch. As I increase this, it's going to increase the strength of the signal coming through it. What you can also do is just use this as a voltage offset. So with nothing patched in, it's just going to generate voltage between, I don't know, minus 5 and plus 5. So I made this little spaceship here that you can fly around. You use two buttons to fly. One button spins the ship in one direction and the other button spins the ship in the other direction. When you hold both buttons down at the same time, then you can thrust in uh, a straight line, basically. You also have a grapple hook that you can deploy and you can use this to pick up objects. It's a very slow and methodical game. So I want the sound to be quite calming and relaxing because it's not like a, a high paced action game this one. It's very very slow and delicate. As for sound design, the elements are quite simple really. I need some thrusters for the left and the right side of the ship. I need a grapple hook deploy and retract. I need the sound of the grapple hook connecting to an object like that and releasing an object. I also need the sound for uh, when you land and pick up a worker. There's a lot of physics interactions in this game, but that could be quite a complex thing to design and program. So for now, I'm just going to leave that silent. So I'm going to start with the thrusters of the ship. And typically how I'd approach that is to use noise. Now the Zero Coast doesn't have any noise in there. There's no noise generator. But what it does have is this random sample and hold circuit here. Random is just noise. So a way to get a noise-like effect out of the zero coast, out of that sample and hold circuit, is to take the square wave out of the oscillator 
and put it into the tempo input. What that's doing now is that that is clocking the system as fast as this oscillator is oscillating. And then that is spitting out random voltages as fast as this os oscillator is oscillating. <laughs> it's hard to say. If I was to just say, plug that output into the balance input, and then use this voltage offset here just to trigger the uh, dynamics output. You get this very digital sounding noise, which I think is quite cool sounding, especially with the game I'm making. It looks kind of 8-bit and this kind of fits. So already that sounds quite appropriate for my thrusters in the game. This is a bit of a happy accident, this one. What I'm doing is I'm using this kind of noise sample and whole thing into the linear FM on the pitch of the main oscillator. And it's got this kind of weird pulsing sound. And it might be a nice little detail just for the grapple hook when it's carrying something. I do have this like speed limit thing in the game where if you're going over a certain speed uh, you're at risk of dying if you crash. This sounds like quite a nice little warning sign. I might just speed it up a bit. Like that. Now I want to create a bunch of like subtle little percussive sounds that I can use for either deploying the grapple hook, retracting it, or latching onto objects. So I'm going to use uh, the classic thing of using the slope generator here as an envelope. I'm going to put that into linear FM. I'm going to cycle the slope to get a bit of extra movement in the modulation. So it's still going to be triggered the same way, but it's also just going to have this extra kind of flutter to it. Like that. I'm going to take the contour out and I'm going to put it into the time control of the slope generator. This is going to work a little bit like a bouncing ball. Quite often with sound design, like it's so much about the gestural component of the sound that um, even when you've got a bunch of modulation going on, just performing with knobs makes it so much more expressive. I've just finished editing files for my recording session and what I've done is I've ended up with 90 clips that I've now imported into my Digitact. I thought what could be cool is to do some slight edits and tweaks to the sounds on the Digitact and then process it into the tra Straker. So here's a dry sound. And here's with a bit of Straeger delay. So it just adds a nice bit of um, space to the sound. Using that lo-fi lovely quality that the Straeger has. As I was playing with the Strager there, I thought I might use some of the noise that this generates as a kind of a background ambience for the game. Just like the idea of using this noise because it's kind of like an interference kind of sound. This might be able to serve as a bit of the soundtrack, to be honest.
Here's the end result then. Uh, so I've got my little thruster sound, quite like, lovely lo-fi crunchy sound. Then I've got my grapple retract, all back in. Really happy with those sounds, I'm glad I processed them through the Strager. Also got that static in the background, which is my um, soundtrack essentially. I extended the static such that um, melodic components kind of float in and out, so it's not always making music sometimes, it's just the static. I've got a sound for when you uh, latch onto an object. And uh, get this in the thing. I've got another sound for when you drop an object. sound for when you deposit the box into the processor and also a sound for when you collect a person kind of like a oh and they've got that warning sound for when you're going too quickly it's cool very very simple I mean the game's extremely simple itself and the sounds are also very simple but already this evokes a mood and a kind of an atmosphere which you didn't have before and like I say like I don't really work with visuals much and um, I think the sound here infers more than what I can portray visually yeah I'm pretty happy with it Thanks for watching. If you want to see more of the games I've made, like this game here, again and again, um, head over to itch.io, which is where I've got a splash page. Um, I only seem to make top-down shooters, so if you're into that, check it out. <laughs> right, thanks.